Now for the hook, we're using our flat round pliers and we want a small loop in the end. It only has to be big enough to go over uh, 1.5 mil wire. So you can measure if you want, but we're just making one hook. So make a fairly small loop in the end, grab the wire fairly close to the end, hold the metal with your finger really close to this, tight against it, push against your finger, roll the pliers, go slightly past with your wire so that you can squeeze it with your parallel jaw pliers to get it back into place and it'll be touching so we can solder it. Give it a squeeze. Grab the loop with your pliers, make sure that it's centered. Lay it on your charcoal block, one piece of hard solder. So flex it, one piece of hard solder, solder that join. When you place your solder on the spot, I usually place it with my flex brush because the solder needs flex on it too. If your solder oxidizes, it makes it really difficult to solder. So I'm just slowly heating this up until the flex dries out. Once it dries out, the solder won't move around anymore. Move into about 60 mil away. Circle, the flux will go clear, the solder will flow just that quickly. So now pick this up while it's still hot so that the flux doesn't stick it to your soldering block. Pickle it. And we're using sodium by I'm using sodium bisulfate for pickle, and uh, it works really good warm, but it also works good cold. And because I have a really small workshop, I keep it cold with the lid on it. So get your piece that's going to be your hook out of the pickle, and hold it on the anvil or over a bench block and hold the loop straight up and down. It doesn't matter whether it's up or down as long as it's straight up and down. And you're going to take your planishing hammer with the rounded end and hammer this to half its thickness. I do the whole length. Uh, you don't have to, but I think aesthetically it looks good. Now at this point Tidy up the end with your sanding stick. Um, it shouldn't be bad because once again you cut a straight line with your uh, saw. So it just takes a few little strokes. Now we're going to hallmark this. This is sterling silver. Turn the loop up and I'll show you why in a second. Now I'm using a chasing hammer. Uh, and this is the only polished hammer that you ever use to hit steel with. So put your hallmark on and the carrot stamp. In this case 925. And then we'll form it. So this is what it looks like at the moment small hook that's soldered, hammered to half its thickness with the loop up, your hallmark on it. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to use our flat round pliers and we're coming up to the fairly large part of the round bit, about in the middle, and we're just going to push that around until this end is even with the end of that. Now we're going to come down to the end, move the round bit on the outside. We're going to put a little kick up in it so that when we snap our jump ring past, um, it's easier to work. And the round bit so that we don't put a mark in it. Now bend this down a little bit more 
until this until it, they touch. And what you can do is you can go past it to the side and then bring it back with your fingers and it'll it'll be just right. So there's our hook ready to put on the end of our bracelet. We need a couple of jump rings for this and with our wire uh, being one and a half millimeters we need at least a three millimeter inside diameter to be able to put two jump rings together. So I think I'll do a 3.5 and I use aluminium knitting needles for my mandrel because they're marked. So being a lazy sod I can just look at my bench I know I want a 3.5 and this is the other part Chuck it up in a cordless hand drill. Stick the end of your wire in the chuck and just stick about 15 mil in. Bend it 90 degrees and gently turn the trigger until you have as many jump rings as you want. Now never let this end flip through your fingers because it'll cut you. So if you're worried about that you can wear gloves or you can just drop it down into the V of your bench peg and when you get to the end it'll just flip on the wood and it won't hurt you. So take that out and for cutting jump rings you can either just hold it in your hand hold it against this or you can actually hold it on the end of your uh, mandrel. So you only need two jump rings but it never hurts to make more than you need. A friend of mine makes a lot of chains and she, she showed me this little trick she takes her coil, puts it on the end of her bench peg, and just holds down really tightly, holds the saw at about a 45 degree angle, and cuts her jump rings that way. Um, I find it works really well until you get to about the last three or four, and then they're difficult to hold, at which point I grab my parallel jaw pliers and just stick them in the end like that and then you can hold it against your peg and cut one at a time that way. Now take your parallel jaw pliers, grab your jump ring and open it sideways like this. That way when you close it you'll be able to get the ends really close together. So put your link on, push the two ends slightly past each other as you're pushing it back together, and then have a close look and make sure that you get that end as close as you can. Because when you solder this, if there are any big gaps, or if it's twisted a bit sideways, it's going to show up. So get this as perfect as you can. Now that's the one end. On the other end, we want to put our hook. So, sorry about that. Open your jump ring. Put the bracelet. And then the hook on and close it as perfectly as you can. Then we're going to solder these two jump rings and we'll be finished. Hold your jump ring with the joint up in your third hand and have the third hand as far away from the join as you can. Um, that's just one of the little tricks 
because the uh, steel jaws will suck the heat away. And if you're right up next to the jump ring, what's going to happen is, if, if you're up next to the join, this will suck the heat away from one side and the other side will get hot and it's really difficult to do a good solder join. Now, you need one piece of solder for this. And I use my solder snippers and I just stick the edge of the solder against the side. I cut it on the charcoal block because it's easy to see and it's easy to pick up. And I use a tungsten solder pick. I prefer the way it works. Uh, if you're used to using titanium, that's fine. So flex the join and we're going to pick solder this. So light your torch, <clears throat> get your neutral flame happening. And what you do is, I'll shift this in so you can see. Put your solder pick on the opposite side of your solder. Heat the pick until it's red. Shift it and the solder will jump and stick on it. So now we're ready to pick solder. And I run the flame so that it's at an up angle so that the only thing the flame touches is that join. I hold my pick about 10 millimeters above it. Heat the jump ring until the flux goes clear. Lower the pick and it's soldered. So do the other end. Flux. Pick up your solder with your pick. Heat the jump ring. Lower your solder pick. And it's finished. So now quench it and pickle it. When you pull your bracelet out of the pickle, it should be a nice frosty white. Uh, look at all your solder joins. And truthfully, there are only three solder joins in this one. There's one in each jump ring and one on the end of the hook. And it makes a nice little bracelet. So once it's out of the pickle, you're happy with your solder joins. Put it in the tumbler for about 10 minutes. Um, I wouldn't polish this on a Tripoli buff because these ends are fairly thin and uh, it wouldn't take much to burn through it. So just chuck it in a tumbler and be happy with it. And another thing that the tumbler will do is it'll loosen these joints up a little bit so that it's a little more flexible. So that's it. Nice, simple, easy bracelet.